It is a little bit challenging to understand why exactly current saturates above pinch off in a MOSFET. So we already concluded that when VDS is greater than VGS minus V threshold, provided there was a channel to begin with, i.e. VGS is greater than V threshold, the channel goes into something called saturation. Saturation happens because we pinch off the channel at the drain end, leading to the disappearance of charges at the drain end. This causes current to saturate at the last level we saw in the ohmic regime. There's a lot that is challenging about this. First of all, we need to understand why exactly current saturates. We talked about current increasing in the ohmic regime, where we draw IDS versus VDS, and then we reach a maximum point. Current didn't have to saturate. Current could have increased, could have continued to increase, maybe at a slower uh, uh, pace, but it could have continued to increase. Perhaps current could have decreased, perhaps current could have dropped suddenly to zero because the channel has disappeared. It's a little bit unclear as of yet why the current saturates at a constant level. So let's look at the situation of pinch off, which is described by these two uh, graphs. So these two graphs show, show the uh, distribution of potential across the channel and the distribution of charge across the channel. Why these two graphs are important, um, I'm just going to explain this in a little bit. But let's look at VCS, which is uh, the difference between the uh, potential at the point in the channel and the source. At the source end, we have VCS equal to zero uh, because we are at the source end. At the drain, we reach a potential of VDS set. VDS set is the uh, drain potential at which the channel saturates. So VDS set is basically equal to VGS minus V threshold. Over here in this graph, we are looking at exactly the point of pinch off, so that VDS is equal exactly to VGS minus V threshold. This leads to a charge, and here we are drawing the uh, absolute value of charge, not including the sign. So this leads to a value of charge at the source end, which is equal to C oxide into VGS minus V threshold. And it leads to a charge at the drain end, which is equal to zero. Why is it equal to zero? Because we have C oxide into VGD minus V threshold, but VGD is also equal to V threshold, and so the charge disappears at the drain end. This is the definition of pinch off. The charge disappears at the drain end. So why are these two graphs important? Because current I was equal to Q times V. More or less, right? It's the product of two things. The amount of charge in the channel, how fast this charge moves. Now, we have a drawing of Q, so we can see it clearly, but we don't have a drawing of V. On the other hand, we actually do, because V is equal to uh, minus mu n E. And E is equal to dV by dx, so this is mu n dV by dx. And we have the drawing of V. We have the graph of V versus x. And so, so we can see the slope of, uh, of V through the channel, and this slope is an indication of the velocity at which the charges are moving. So we see that charges are not constant throughout the channel. Charges are at their maximum at the source end and are at their minimum, and their minimum is equal to zero or null at the drain end. But current, current has to be continuous throughout the whole channel. We have to have a, a constant value of current through the channel. Why is it that we have to have a constant value of current? This comes from current continuity, because current going through a cross-section of the channel has to be current exiting the same cross-section. There's nothing happening within this cross-section. There's no annihilation of carriers and no generation of carriers. There's nothing happening to upset the equilibrium. And so current has to be the same throughout the channel. So we have more charges at the source end then we have at any random point in the middle of the channel. Let's choose this point, for example. And yet, the current is the same at the two points. What does that say? That says that the velocity, which is proportional to the slope at the source, is lower than the velocity at this random point. And we actually do see this from the graph. As we move towards the drain, 
Charge decreases, but the slope of the potential graph increases, indicating an increase in velocity. And so, as we move from the source to the drain, we see an increase in velocity and a decrease in charge so that the product of the two remains constant throughout the channel. One thing we notice is that we have zero charge at the drain. Now, if we have zero charge, this should lead to a zero current because current is the product of charge times velocity. But I know for a fact that current is not zero. Why? Because there is a value for the product of charge times velocity at the source at any point in the channel and these are all going to be equal and are going to be equal to a value of current which is equal to I sat which is k over 2 into Vgs minus V threshold all square. So how does this happen? How come we have a, a zero charge at the drain end and yet we have a total current? So let's always keep in mind that we have I equals um, Q times V. Um, this is important to always keep in mind. And let's look at what happens when we raise VDS above VDS set. So we are applying a VDS greater than VGS minus V threshold. So this is um, actually a worse case than uh, the pinch off case we are looking at. So we see that the charge density at the source is still C oxide into VGS minus V threshold. At the drain, charge density is equal to zero. So nothing is going to change actually about the charge profile. It's going to be the same as the charge profile we saw in, uh, in at pinch off. When we look at the uh, potential profile, we'll see that the graph throughout the channel is actually the same graph we saw at pinch off. But there is a balance of potential. VDS is not equal to VDS set. So there's a balance of potential equal to VDS minus VDS set. That balance of potential will entirely fall upon this point, which is the end of the channel. What's happening at this point? At this point, we have created a very tiny, infinitesimally small depletion zone. And this depletion zone exists between the end of the pinched off channel and the drain. It is really, really small, but it exists. And we, what we are saying here is that all of the excess potential will fall upon this infinitesimally small depletion zone. The band diagram of the channel is going to be minus Q multiplied by the potential diagram. So it is the same as the potential diagram. What we are seeing from the energy diagram is that electrons will slide down here. Not only will they slide down, they will accelerate because the slope continues to increase as we go towards the drain. When they reach the drain, they see a sudden fall which accounts for all the excess potential above pinch off potential and they will enter into the drain. Velocity is the slope of the energy diagram or the uh, voltage diagram and we have shown it here. Now, how come we do have a current flowing into the drain when at the drain end we have zero charge? So we have zero charge at the drain end and yet, we have a finite current, and that finite current, the value of that finite current is equal to I set. Why is it equal to I set? Because throughout the whole channel, the profile of charge and velocity is the same as the profile of charge and velocity at pinch off. It hasn't changed. And so that means the current has saturated and has reached a, val a value from which it cannot move. But how come current can flow into the drain? What's happening here is that we have a um, depletion zone, and this depletion zone is extremely small, right? But the depletion region ostensibly has a, a conductivity of zero, right? And so, charge, uh, so current density in the depletion uh, zone is equal to sigma times the electric field. Now, if sigma is equal to zero, we should think of current flowing through the depletion zero region as zero, right? Uh, that makes sense. We consider depletion zones to be insulating, and so current flowing through them has to be zero. Unless, of course, the electric field is infinite. In that case, the value of, electric, uh, of, of, charge de of current density going into the drain is going to be an indeterminate uh, number, which has to be determined by external 
factors, which is the current incoming into the depletion zone from the end of the channel, which is ISAT. So the reason we do see current flowing into the drain is that despite the fact that the depletion zone has uh, infinite uh, resistivity, it also sees an infinite field. And why does that infinite field occur? It occurs because we see here a drop, a finite drop of voltage occurring on a distance dx of zero. So this finite drop of voltage, which is equal to uh, Vds minus Vds set, we can calculate it, over zero is going to give us an electric field which is infinite. This infinite electric field will sweep all the charges from the end of the, of the channel into the drain. However, the profile of charges and velocity within the channel remains the same as the profile during pinch-off, and so the value of this current is going to remain constant. There's one thing we can, there's one objection we can raise here, which is why is the excess potential going to fall entirely upon, uh, upon the uh, end point, this pinch-off point? Why not divide it between the channel so that the channel um, takes some of it and the end point takes some of it? So why would it, wouldn't we have a potential profile looking like this, where this is VDS minus VDS set? So how could we assert that the excess potential would fall entirely upon the uh, depletion point? Notice that this is an important assertion because it is the assertion that leads to the velocity profile and the charge profile remaining constant and thus the current remaining constant. And the reason this cannot happen is because if this happens, then the point at which we see pinch off is actually going to be a little bit earlier than the drain, right? because we now see VDS set a little bit earlier. And this means that the depletion region is going to be wider than zero uh, dx. And so when we see delta V divided by delta x, and delta x is finite, the electric field is not going to be equal to infinity. And so J into the depletion region is going to be, um, is going to be zero, because E is not infinite. And so this means that we will stop current flowing. When we stop current flowing, even though there's current in the remainder of the channel, this means the charge will accumulate at this end of the channel. This charge that accumulates will keep pushing the channel until it reaches the depletion point again. And so the only sustainable state of affairs is this state of affairs, which leads to a saturation of the value of current.